I just knew that I was going to hell. And I knew that was the enemy that came for me. Because when I looked up, I looked right into his face and eyes. And it, it was so huge. It was almost looked like a fallen angel. And he had the horns of a ram. And it was horrible. When I looked into his eye sockets, it was like looking into death and hell. The best way I can describe it, it was a darkness within a darkness. Randy Hicks' drug use and his eventual overdose had kept him living in darkness since early in his childhood. He grew up one of nine children in rural Illinois with little parental supervision. I got high when I was eight years old. Uh, two of my brothers had got me out in the garage smoking a bong. That was the first time I ever used marijuana. I'll never forget it. I loved it. Randy's brothers hid the goods in the garden out back, in their school bags, or even under the mattress. One time I found some white powder in there. It was cocaine. I didn't know what it was, and I touched it, and it had numbed my lips. And I was like, wow, that's some strange stuff. And one day I just happened to watch my brother sniff it, and I sniffed some too. And the time I got to high school, I was a freshman. You know, people, people were selling it to make money. time I was a senior in high school, I was selling big time. After graduation, Randy joined the military. I ended up being a tanker, an armor crewman, and they sent me to Fort Irwin, California. Well, up there, crystal meth was big. Well, when I got up there, I got hooked up with the wrong people. I started drinking heavier, and then I really started going on a binge with crystal meth. Oh my God, I was so addicted. It was like I couldn't live without it. I breathed it from the time I got up in the morning to the time I went to bed. I, I started selling stuff to get it. And they sent me to rehab. And eventually they, they released me from the military. It bothered me. I was like, man, I had this great opportunity to turn my life around. Why did I get go back to doing the drugs? But it only got worse. Randy spent a year in jail for robbing a gas station. He was so high, he doesn't even remember holding a gun to the clerk's head. When he got out of jail, he overdosed. He was only 27. They went ahead and pulled a white sheet up on me because they said I was going to die. They called my family in. When I woke up, it was the most frightening moment because I looked down and I'm looking at a white sheet. Doctors discovered Randy was still alive. After running numerous tests, he was released. But even that near-death experience wasn't enough to scare Randy straight. Randy married, but the alcohol and drug use continued, eventually destroying the relationship. In 1997, Randy's wife left him with their two young children. And I was smoking weed, and I still did a little coke. Not like I used to, but I was still doing it, yes. The moment that changed that, all of a sudden my body collapsed to the ground. I felt something physically dragging me out of my body. And I mean, I looked up and I saw death and I saw hell in his eyes and it had these huge horns. It, it curled around like a ram and death just filled the room and it scared me. I could visibly feel my spiritual man separating from my flesh. I didn't feel no pain, but I felt it leaving, trembling in fear. And immediately I fell on my face and I cried out, Jesus. I said, forgive me of my sins. God, help me with my addictions. Take it all away. Just don't let me go to hell, please. I was begging. I was crying. I did everything I knew. And as soon as I looked at the door, my door opened. And I saw this long, white, glowing robe, white. There is just no white in this world you can describe it. I knew without a doubt that the moment I cried out for Jesus, that God had showed up right there and saved me at the moment I cried out. From that moment, uh, man, I just wanted to know God. I wanted to know Jesus. I wanted to know this one who, when I knew without a doubt I was going to hell, came for me. Immediately, Randy's craving for drugs and alcohol was replaced with a hunger and thirst for Jesus. I travel and share what God brought me from, what I went through, what it will do to you, and how Christ is the answer. When you call on that name Jesus, He is there right there. 
and he is ready to receive you and to forgive you of all your sins.